Hello everyone, this is Sonia from Sonia's Quilts and Embroidery and today we are going to do a um, stash buster and I've got my base piece, we're going to do a picture, we're going to do a picture if, if you have always wanted to learn how to do machine embroidery and uh, not machine embroidery machine applique and I'm not talking about embroidery machine applique I'm talking about a regular straight stitch sewing machine that does a zigzag uh, applique and then this is the one for you I've got my camera as high up as I can get it and I'm not gonna be able to see the whole thing I've got a piece here and I, I meant for it to come out about 24 inches by 24 inches and let me see 24 that way and just a hair over 24 that way uh, doesn't matter what size you make it I will give you a little tip though the higher you make it the bigger you make it the big longer it's gonna take you to finish your seam I'm gonna do this in a baby quilt and when I get done with it I will do a session around it maybe a couple of sessions around it in order to make it maybe quilt size but for the center part our subject part of our quilt I've got it measured at about 24 by 24 inch square to me it looks longer this way than it does this way but it measures just a hair bit wider I mean not even like a quarter of an inch or maybe not that much and while we're waiting on the iron to heat up which is the only downfall from this iron it has a safety kickoff, which I like, but it's quick. If you're not, if you don't use it within like three minutes, it'll kick off, and it takes three minutes for it to heat back up and steam again. So let me talk to you about what we're going to need for this project, and I'm not going to tell you the seam we're going to make because um, I do know what it's going to be, but I don't want you to have a preconceived notion of what you think it should look like. And so I'm going to build, we're going to build a scene starting at the bottom and working our way up. And the story behind this scene, I have made this scene many, this scene many times. The last time I made it was in about mm, 92, 93, something like that. That's 1992, 93, 94, something like that. <clears throat> and I would do it on, uh, like a dark blue navy royal blue t-shirt back then it was all the rage uh, applique t-shirts and that was before that the embroidery machines really started doing appliques I really don't know the history behind how long embroidery machines has been doing appliques but I had never seen it before at that time so I taught myself how to applique using just a close zigzag satin stitch basically and uh, so that's what I want. Today we're just going to build our scene. We're not going to do the applique today. This video will be long enough just doing our scene. Now I have picked out some fabrics and I have ironed the heat and bond light on the back of all my pieces. And you want to go with this purple because uh, this is okay to sew through. If you go with the red, it will gum up your needle and all the works of your machine and that is not nice so I just picked out some just some scraps that I had uh, some greens some yellows um, different yellows this yellow I like it's not just a solid yellow it's got some interest to it it's got some uh, not texture to it but it's got like some um, light and dark spots in it I thought this came from Hobby Lobby and I've got some white, some different greens, and somewhere, oh, I've got a little, little tiny piece of brown. And these all came out of my um, fabrics that I use for applique, and I don't throw away hardly anything in that because a small little piece, even a piece this size, will do a part of an applique. So I have got to get my applique fabrics organized. I'm not sure how you're supposed to do that. But I'm just going to do the best I can and put them in some little, those plastic shoe boxes you get. Okay, my iron is heated up. 
the plastic shoe boxes are like a dollar at the dollar store or Walmart. And I've got a bunch of those and I'm going to organize. All right, we're going to run a good, nice steam over our base fabric. Want you take this green now a little hint here on this green this green is going to be the bottom of my quilt so I after I ironed the heat bond on there I went back to my cutting mat and I made a straight edge on here so I think that's just I could I couldn't decide if I had cut my heat bond I uh, put my heat bond on here because there's not a heat bond on this little area right here, if you probably can see that. But I wanted just to make sure um, that it was, I had got enough on here, and I think I do. All right. So, I'm going to freehand this. And art, I'm not an artist. Um, never claimed to be, but I can do this. I've done a bunch of them. Maybe a little rusty at it. But we'll start out. And let's just cut this off, this excess off. Just leave it a little long on each end. Put it on here, and I'm going to take this end and just kind of do some heels and, so, and also putting this heat bond on here. It helps keep your fabric from being all raveling on the edges while you're working. Okay. Now, when you get ready to machine applique this, and I am going to show you some techniques to machine applique in, on my next video, but when you're machine appliquing this, um, You, you can do it in, I lost my train of thought there for a second. You can do this in layers, like you would lay down this piece and then you would stop and go and get you, uh, use some, I use regular sewing thread, not embroidery thread, but just regular sewing thread and applique along this edge and then come back, iron it real well and then go back and do your next level. But I am going to do it, the whole scene today and plus you can always go back because sometimes what happens is some of your the heat bond is temporary it's just a temporary to hold it spot and sometimes it can start coming up but if it does that just go back and hit it with your iron again and give it a good press all right i'm going to peel off my heat bond I just kind of rough it up, makes it a little easier to peel this off sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna lay this down to the bottoms because when I get ready to sew my sashing around hat there, around the whole entire oh. Uh, edge of the quilt, I want this bottom part of this to be caught in that seam of putting a sashing around it. I'm going to hit this with an iron, but I'm not going to go all the way to the end because my fabric is a little bit too long and I don't want to iron it down to my four needs to be replaced cutting mat, uh, ironing, ironing mat. So I'm not going to iron that on the edge. I'll just turn it over now and Clip this excess off. And then peel this one back. And cut this off. Okay. That wasn't a very big piece of fabric. 
And I, I, I will be uh, totally honest with you. When I thought about doing this video, I did consider going and buying some um, fabrics for this, but I thought, nope, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a stash buster. So I'm not going to do that. All right. So now we, I'm going to take my white fabric. And I've got some cardstock here and a small ruler. I'm just gonna peel that back just a little bit. Taking our cardstock, we're gonna make a pattern and it will be, I'm gonna cut it at, it's about, that's the wrong end of the ruler. I'm severely left-handed. I do everything backwards. Let's do about, um, let's go about 80 inches. And draw this. I will give you a little hint here. This isn't going to be a picket fence post. So you can either do your pic pic picket fence post rounded or at a point. And I'm going to do mine at a point. Cut that out. take the wrong side, the paper side, this is the fabric side, and this is the paper side of our, with our heat bond, and it doesn't matter on the fence post because there's really not a reverse to this, but if you had something that was, um, oh, let's say, what could be a good example? Like if you had something that you wanted it pointed in the right in a certain direction, you would do it. You could do it backwards. I'm gonna just put these side by side. This is gonna be a little bit more elaborate design than I used to put on t-shirts. But this is not a t-shirt. This is a quilt. I'm gonna do. about six picket fences. Again, I made this one inch by 80 inch. One, two, three, four, five. Six. It makes, even if your scissors are a little bit dull, which mine usually are, uh, it, this makes this, uh, this heat and bond makes the fabrics cut at a more crisp, um, makes them cut more crisp. I don't know why it does that, but. And none of that pesky raveling stuff. Because this will be a raw edge um, applique versus a, I don't know what it's called, but I've never done it. Sorry, my air conditioner is squeaking. It does, it does that when it rains. I don't know if water is getting into the, I don't know, it squeaks when it rains. Okay, let's cut our fence post apart. And again, 
This was just a very small piece of white fabric. Basically, 8 inches by 6 inches. Because I did a 6 fence post as wide and I made them 8 inches long. Or, well, I made them a little longer than 8 inches. So I would probably go <coughs> 8 inches and then put my top on there, which probably puts it about 9 inches. Okay. This is our, looks kind of like a pencil. Not much to it. Doesn't take a gift. Doesn't take a gifted person, an artist, to do that. All right. <clears throat> then let's lay down our fence post. And wait till you get it all laid out and decide that you like it before that you iron it down. And I think we're only going to be able to fit five on here. There we have it. Our picket fence. Now, oh, hot. Um, <clears throat> let's roll this up again. And we're going to cut a square, uh, no, a rectangle this time. And it's going to be um, let's say five by six. And I'm putting my inch mark right on the edge of the paper. Right at this five inch mark. And then let's go across it like this. It is really, really raining. I mean, really. We're getting a North Alabama spring shower right now. And yes, I'm cutting fabric with the same scissors that I'm cutting my fabric with. I've had these scissors a very long time. I paid one dollar for them, and they're just about had it. And let's lay, I've got this print, I love this print, it's been discontinued. I bought all they had, and I still got quite a bit of it, but I found this little small scrap while ago. And let's just draw this square with a sharpie. One thing about <clears throat> putting the heating bond, on the back of our applique squares, doesn't matter how dark the fabric is, it shows up on the on the back side. Cut this out. I need to hit this again with my iron. Apparently I didn't hit that. I didn't do it, press it very well the first time. It's coming loose. 
I'm going to change my ironing board pad cover here very soon. This one's had it. Okay. put this right about here. Maybe a little lower. Now I've got a very small piece somewhere here of this brown and I need something not too big and round. Here's some. That's too big. That's too small. thought this stroke through before I got to this point. Let's see. That'll be about right. I need to throw this candle away anyway. If you want your hole smaller, find something that's not as big around. I'm going to take this rectangle pattern again and I'm going to trim it down uh, let's find the center point on the end again center point is two and a half inches And then let's go from, I measured that at, a, at three inches, three inches up, at two and a half inches and then three inches from the top to the bottom, or from the bottom to the point. And then I'm going to take the corner of the pattern and intersect that point. There we go. Take this floral fabric again and draw us off a triangle. Now, this could have been done in one piece, and I'll show you in a minute just what I'm talking about. But I like it in two pieces so that you can applique in between the two pieces and give it a little more, I guess, definition. More visual, visually pleasing.
but I'll pick up my iron and every now and then it resets. As long as it thinks I'm using it, it'll stay hot. It's got a mind of its own. Sometimes when these are freshly ironed on the fabric, they're a little more stubborn about peeling off. All right. Now, what I'm talking about is, and this is, I've laid this down just a little off. That absolutely does not matter. When you applique, you would have to applique in between these two right here to keep those from raveling. So, um, that's why I kind of like to do them in, in two different pieces. You see where I'm going with this yet? You see a picture forming? Okay, now, Lord, how musty I'm hot. So humid today. Or it is right now. I'm going to go back with this brown here and I want to make me a, another piece with it <clears throat> this little tail right here will be just right I'm going to cut. This. Um, one inch wide would be perfect. Bring our canvas back down. I'm going to lay this like so. I'm going to cut this off at a 45 degree angle like that. another 45 degree angle like that and I think that will be perfect let's see I think any imperfection you know not too bad but any kind of gives it more that more of a um, homemade look to it that people really, really, really like. All right, now I'm gonna use the piece I tore and make me a pattern. Okay. 
lay that on there for the length and cut it off. And let's go straight down with the iron so we don't just dislodge any of our pieces. And there we go. Now, oh, um, I need a large, large, a, uh, don't think I'm not prepared for this video because I did a lot of preparing. But I knew this video was going to be one that I would kind of think as I go and so um, don't please don't start the comments saying my goodness I wish you'd be better prepared or man you do drone on this is a board buster because everybody's supposed to be at home and minding your own and I'm trying to keep it I don't want you to be bored so um, that is <clears throat> what this video is about but if you get bored and you you know you don't have you don't have to watch it or you can break it down but I am doing this as I go so I do want a darker brown right here and also another thing that would be cute for this too is to do a little heart shape right here for the little bird house I'm trying to see if the brown fabric in here before I leave my spot Either darker or lighter, either one would be fine. Uh, this will be okay right here. We just need a little spot of heat bond on this. Put it over in a corner so not to waste. And then I'm just going to freehand this. eyeball it straight on that end and a little bit of a curve on this end put that down like that put a little bit lower under his hole there now back to our pattern not now back to our fat paper because we're going to draw another pattern and I hope this turns out okay because I'm not an artist Okay, that turned out terrible. Okay, that's good.
get this cut out. Remind my iron I'm not done yet. I think I heard a long time ago that when decorating, you use odd numbers. And I guess I have stuck in my head because I just can't stand the thoughts of a four petaled flower. We got our yellow with a white polka dots on it. Back to our Sharpie. Now I'm going to draw off three of these, and I'll be right back when I get them cut out. Okay. That has raveled just a little bit, but whenever you're doing your applique stitch, it has a way of just falling right into line. Okay. I've cut out three. Like I said, I'll heard a long time ago that odd numbers are more pleasing to the eyes. So I'm going to do three of these flowers. You can do as many as you want. When you get, if you do one of these, please send me a picture. My email is always in the, com in the um, description box. Send me a picture, and I would love to post your results on my Facebook page. All right, I decided, after contemplating this for a minute, that these need to be Black Eyed Susies. I don't know if Black Eyed Susies are yellow, but I, that one's got a little point on it. I just freehanded cut these little black circles. So that's why I don't like to cut out even throw away the smallest piece of fabric because you never know when it'll come in handy and it's all you've got of that color. And but it does get ridiculous after a while. And I have got to have a massive cleanup. During the break, <clears throat> after I cut my little <clears throat> I have allergies terrible. After cutting out my little uh, flowers, I went outside and it had stopped raining. And it was cool out there, so I went in and it cooled off, and I'm hot. So I went out there and I left the little dogs in the house. They were out there looking like, I can't believe you left us out here. All right, I'm going to freehand these little stems. And I'm going to go with that curve. And until we get these like we want them, and that's way too long. Cut that sucker way down. Until I get this like I want it, I'm going to not iron it down. And now that I've come back in, the bottom has fell out again, so I guess I timed that just right. We already have a curve going here, so let's stay with it. Oh no, there it is. I lost my little black eye.
Best of this one striped. And shorter. Overlapping is completely fine. To get the look that you want. I think that is adorable. What you think? Let me know what you think. Love to read your comments. All right. If you have a question, I try to answer them. I've had two people today that follow me on YouTube call me about questions. One was about my necktie quilt, and one was about the t-shirt quilts. Oh, that is so cute so far. Okay, now I'm going to put a little sunshine on these flowers. And I want to go with a nice size sunshine. So I'm going to turn my candle. No, I want it bigger than that. Let me think, what do I have that's bigger? I gotta use the bead off of this container. Remember when we were kids in the first grade drawing pictures and put a sunshine in the sky? And we always put the little beans coming off of it. And you can do that if you want to, that's up to you. And I had decided yet if I'm gonna do that or not. Uh, let's just kind of play it by ear and seeing what it's gonna look like when we get done. Let's see what it would look like if we put some beams on it. I'm just freehanding these. They'll probably be all a different width. Not on purpose, but because I'm freehanding it. this. I'm going to cut them off a little shorter. i tell you what, let's stack them up to make them all the same length. And I might decide to add a couple of more. I think I like the length of that short one there. And let's lay these out. I think it gives the sunshine a little bit of a more friendly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna need some. Unless I pull the sun. Well, I've got to iron it down. See, that's what you get for ironing it down before you just have completely decided what you like.
Make a scrappy mess. Take one of these for a pattern. Stack them all up. that one. If they hang over, that's fine. We'll just catch it in our seam and it will be perfectly fine. I think we need one more. I think that makes the sunshine look a lot friendlier. To me, if it's, it, to me, it looked like with just the round circle, like a hot, boiling sun. So, I think that makes the sunshine look good. And you could even put a little smiley face on him. And, um, let's go back to the white. If I can find it. Here it is. I'm going to freehand us some billowing clouds. Well, that's the most horrible excuse for a cloud I've ever seen in my life. Let's see if I can fix it. Well, it's looking worse and worse. That's not too bad. This is going to do better on the second one. Or I can do better on the second one. Let's start out with a kind of a, a rectangle. Loosely a rectangle. I think if you make a more crisp in like this and back out in and back out kind of like the kind of like the point of the inside of a heart well that ain't too bad like I said I never I never claim to be an artist all right let's get all these pieces ironed down now while I'm working on this, I will tell you that the second part of this, the second part will be the actual sewing down and then we're not going to do, I'm not going to do a video on the whole um, applique because this is not something that takes five minutes to do. Um, you just have to, what I say, I call BIS, actually I don't say BIS, but anyway, BIS, butt in seat. Butt in seat sewing. If your butt's in the seat and you're sewing, you'll get it done. If you think of a lot of excuses why that you need to be doing something else, you'll never get it done. So set yourself some time. You know, it's 30 minutes here and 30 minutes there to get this done. And when I get the video, the second part of the video done, when I get it back up, my actual my actual quilt will be finished. 
and quilted and ready to go. I will probably post this. I'm giving Etsy a second chance. I got a little bit heart broken over Etsy for a while there. But uh, I took a big, a big took a big break. And I'll come back. I've got a few quilts listed on there now. I put a link, I'll put a link to my Etsy shop in the description box. And so you can go and look at some of the quilts I have posted there. Also, you can join my Facebook group, Sonia's Quilts and Embroidery. I've got like there's like 18. It's a very it's a great great group. Occasionally you get a sour apple in there. Can't be helped when you're when you've got 18,000 members in your on your group page. You sometimes uh, can't avoid those people, but you can when they rear their ugly heads. You can block them, and I have. Go straight down. Go right to the edge there. Oh man. Oh. He didn't have any heat on the end, tip into that one. That's why that was curling up. This one will be available on my Etsy shop. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. Now, one last thing. Um... bird here and I blew him up because he came out this size and I blew him up to this size and I think he's gonna be a great size for this um, I'm gonna cut him out just loosely I'm not gonna get that that stem and I think what color would he be would be pretty for him. Uh, blue is pretty. But it would need to be a different shade of blue than what we already have going on. Let's see what this looks like next to our blue. I think that'll be great. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This is a piece of Oh, what is this called? Uh, can't think of it. I'll think of it later. This is a scrap that I had left from a quilt job. Absolutely cannot think of what it's called. Comes in many, many, many colors. Uh, comes in multicolored. Comes bright, vivid, vivid, beautiful colors. All right. This is what we want our bird to look like because he's sitting just right to put him on this limb. And his little belly's gonna cover up his feet. I hate to tell you that, but yeah, his belly's gonna cover up his feet because I don't want to applique those tiny, tiny little feet. Let's go down here to where it's a, a little bit lighter. Let's fussy do, fussy do this, fussy cut this. All right, since I want him to be this away, 
I have to turn him over and cut him this way. And this is tricky. The best way I could think to do this is to cut him out completely. Now his little tail is hidden behind that branch and we don't want to cut his tail off so we're just going to cut right over the branch. Go back over the branch so that we have his little tail. Cut his feet off. Sorry little bird. We'll need to come up with something else for his little beak. Um, birds' beaks are not yellow like a duck, so We need to do his beak. We're just going to do a blue beak. Alright, we're going to reverse this bird and lay it down. And we're going to stick a pin in this. Maybe it won't distort our image too much. And we'll cut this little bird out. Now, let me show you a little trick. From my vast experience, uh, it's hard to cut around this like this because the paper's so thin. So what I do is I do these little marks like this from the bird off uh, onto the white, onto the heat bond, and it kind of gives you a dot to dot type um, look when you get ready to start cutting. It just makes it easier. You can do it as thick as you want to. It's just kind of hard to go around the edge of this thin, thin paper. That's why I like to make my patterns out of at least cardstock or thick plastic. It makes it easier to go around. Might be a little bit shallow over here. Let's go a little. A little more. Okay. See what I mean? Now you just cut inside of the line. That's all you got to do. Okay, there he is. Now I'm going to put his features on here. When I, while, I'm while I'm applicating, I'm going to lay him on here and pin him down. And then I'm going to take a regular straight stitch and I'm just going to go over this with my sewing machine just sew right on top of this pattern and put in his features his little wing. It goes down like this, up a little bit, and then around that way. And that way, he'll be able to, he'll have his little markings on him. He'll look more bird-like. And we're going to set him right there. Uh-oh. 
No, it wasn't. Hadn't kicked off yet. All right. Now, let me cut off my little long sunshine beams here. And I'm going to hang this up and give you the shot of the whole thing. Now remember, I'm going to be busy this weekend and I may applique this tomorrow or Thursday. I've got a big quilt over there that I made the other day that I'm excited about putting the binding on it. And it will be available for sale. It will be on my Etsy shop. And I will... Um, like I said, I'm gonna post. I'm gonna give you, send you my video, my the link to my Facebook. Shoot, I can't talk today. Uh, a link to my Etsy store and my email address will be in the comments below. If you have any questions, I quit putting my phone number. It's there on a lot of my old videos, but um, it appears there are some sick, sick people out there. So I have to start blocking some numbers, which is a shame, a real shame. Uh, I put five fence posts, one bird, one birdhouse, one sun, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine little moon uh, sunbeams, three flowers, three black dots, three stems, one grass, and two clouds. So, I don't think I have room for another cloud. So I'm gonna leave it like that and just, you know, forget about the whole odd number thing. But I thought the bird, he turned out so cute. But the way I get my images, and you can get a huge assortment of, of images by going to um, Google and typing in, I'll uh, say for instance, a horseshoe. And you don't want just any horseshoe. You want a horseshoe coloring book page image. And that will give you a very simple, simple um, design that you can use to cut out and make your own patterns. Uh, I have done horseshoes. I have done sailboats. Um, just you want a coloring book page. And you can scroll down through there. There'll be literally hundreds of images and I got this bird. Now there was one that I was tempted to go with, another bird image. I was tempted to go with it. And they were kind of like kind of cute, cartoony, and I decided against it. And so I went with B is for bird and I blew him up two hundred percent on the paint page, which I think every computer's got paint. It's where you can go in with the different colored markers and all that. And, and I blew him up to 200% and made him just the perfect size for the birdhouse. I do not have a pattern for this. This is strictly um, freehand. And thank as I went to get this going. I have not got another one made. I have not made this design in, oh Lord. 28 years, I guess it's been since I made this design. But some things you just don't forget. But I'm going to pause for a minute, hang this up, let you see the full uh, picture. And um, I hope you like it. If you enjoyed this video on, on a scrap buster, an, uh, a different kind of scrap buster, we didn't do triangles or squares or rectangles or anything like that. No half square, no half square triangles, no crazy quilts or anything like that. But these was using very small pieces, and most quilters have, you know, a good selection of colors. Thank you all so much, and if you have any questions, any, anything you want to say or ask, feel free to do so. Thank you so much.